uh, as you have rightly mentioned about the role of exercise and uh, and diet and generally people when they see somebody young exercising like this they feel oh god this is not for me this is for young girls like karishma and lakshmi and uh, uh, i am 52 or i am 55 and i can't do it obviously you can't do all the kind of acrobatics that uh, the younger people do but uh, i tell my personal experience that uh, i started exercising in a gym first time when i became 56 years and uh, now this has been a ongoing uh, activity for last uh, now i'm 61 so almost 5 years and in these 5 years i have come down from 96 to 73 kgs and that's a that's a big achievement for me because uh, uh, it's not about gym alone but uh, simultaneously the diet that i eat and everything so i think thinking that after surgery uh, you can put on weight and uh, things can go out of hand uh, one should see that uh, mr kiran shah is not very active in the gym but by controlling his diet well by taking care of portions and avoiding unhealthy food he is able to maintain on other side the people who are eating well and are also exercising are getting into a better uh, fitness uh, mode so investing in in uh, investing time i'm not saying investing money investing time like i think one of the most successful if you ask me one tool to maintain weight is a food diary what lakshmi has shown because when you write a food diary it's uh, like seeing a mirror to your so what did you eat yesterday if you write it down honestly you and you if you use a app like this which calculates calories you will know where you have gone wrong because you will not remember what when you went wrong last week how many times you went wrong last week or how many times you went wrong last month but when you have a food diary you know last week i went wrong three times three days and this week i went wrong only two twice and next week i'll make it that i will go wrong once and that helps in in keeping up the motivation so i'll quickly show you three four slides and then we will open it uh, for question answers so yeah so i think the problem areas after surgery as we have identified with the by meeting patients in last so many years is is this typical concept of intermittent fasting intermittent fasting was not even there when we started doing bariatric surgery it's a more recent more uh, re it's a recent fad uh because when you are fasting you are you will invariably end up having a larger meal and end up eating fast when you are starving when you are hungry so i recently saw a patient who came from aurangabad and a few years after bariatric surgery and she had put on some 8 10 kgs and then before she became aware and then she on her own went on intermittent fasting uh, her first meal of the day was at 12 o'clock afternoon and she will she will quickly gulp it down and then she will go and vomit it because she was so uncomfortable and then she will have another meal in the evening late evening and again she will gulp it down she will again go and vomit and when i asked her when did you start vomiting it all started in last one and a half years from when she started intermittent fasting of course she lost weight but this weight loss was at a great cost because the the vomiting uh, was making her miserable at least twice a day her vitamins have gone for a toss and she was in big trouble so i think we need to eat to lose weight we don't don't need to starve to lose weight and after bariatric nutrition or diet is different than than uh, losing weight without uh, a surgery it's completely different here you need to have nutrition as lakshmi and karishma were showing that you need to have your proteins first you need to avoid carbohydrates while in a when somebody who goes on a standard diet you are eating more of salads which are mostly mostly carbohydrates they they are fillers they are like fibers fiber is a carbohydrate so meal interval should be less then people have frequent craving for unhealthy food i agree that uh, the craving will talk about it lack of exercises which is again understandable 
and if you have to point out one single thing that is alcohol so uh, just three or four slides on this and then we so one thing that you must understand is that uh, we mix up hunger and thirst if you are drinking water continuously and i'm saying only water i'm not talking of carbonated drink which uh, you know lakshmi said kiran bhai also said carbonated drinks stretch your pouch especially if you drink it in first year so if you drink plenty of water you may not feel hungry many times we we mix up these things and then it's preferable to eat every 3 to 4 hours because when you are eating frequently you are able to control how much are you going to eat the same person if you instead of uh, every 3 to 4 hours if you eat every 6 to 8 hours you cannot control your portion because you are so hungry you want to just gulp it down uh, to take care of your hunger you are starving and then if you are having intermittent fasting and dr goel or amna tells you that you should be eating over 20 minutes and not in 5 minutes you will laugh at it because you are so hungry you will finish your meal in 3 minutes forget 20 minutes but if you are eating when you are not hungry okay then you can afford to eat slowly and as i always tell my patients and patients have educated me that they the the wise patients have preponed their meal times so if you are hungry at 1 pm in the afternoon you start your meal at 12 o'clock don't wait till 1 pm so when you are not hungry and you take a meal uh, and sit down with your portion and eat it slowly you can eat slowly and you can control portion so i think uh, hunger uh, can be mitigated by and you can control your portions and then another simple thing is that and and most of you know it because this uh, this mixed up messed up keto diet has done one good thing that they have educated people about insulin sensitivity and insulin resistance so when you have a high carbohydrate diet or which also includes high fat diet your insulin levels go up suddenly your sugar levels go up suddenly insulin levels go up suddenly and then it suddenly drops because these are simple carbohydrates so it goes up in 15 20 minutes and it drops down in one hour's time and then you are again hungry because your sugar levels are low or your insulin levels are high now when you eat something like proteins or low gi food then the sugars go up gradually and they remain sustained for a longer period so then you are not hungry so this is very simple and this learning to general public has come through keto diet so we should thank the keto dieters but there are problems with keto diet which i am not going to talk but this is this is a something that must be a take away message that simple carbohydrates or like sweets or let's say a bar of chocolates or or just a gulab jamun or a laddu or whatever you want to say uh, will make you hungry again faster while a piece of fish or or a or a tofu vegetarian food uh, can will not make you hungry again very soon so hunger can be controlled by you by using these tools and by being a little more wiser if you are not able to control it up till now we always insist on proteins and that we had been doing before keto diet comes because proteins gives early fullness so satiety that we talk about is comes mostly from proteins proteins gives you less calories so let's say if you have 1 gram of fat and 1 gram of protein so fat will give you the 9 calories versus 4 calories with with proteins so i think this this basic science as lakshmi said it's not a rocket science this basic understanding of science is so important that protein gives less calories and then amna today showed which i didn't know before this and after i saw amna's presentation in morning that more calories are spent in digestion of proteins so when you are eating proteins your body is spending 30% calories to digest proteins versus 10% calories when you are taking something like carbohydrates so by eating proteins you are losing more weight and that is or you are spending more calories and then obviously you are losing more weight so i think 
and then when you are having a protein meal your hunger is delayed you, that i have already showed that the sugar levels do, do not go up suddenly they go gradually up so you are not hungry again very fast so i think uh, proteins we have been talking for for ages uh, in bariatric programs all that you need to know is that you take care of your proteins well and and only those who have some kidney problems or those who have uric acid problems they should be talking to our uh, nutritionist amna to make sure that they don't end up with problem everybody else can have protein safely now as far as cravings are concerned because this has been going on in our whatsapp groups different whatsapp groups that i have cravings what do i do so cravings are are not related to your stomach cravings are related to our mind cravings are because we have been brought up on on certain habits uh, as lakshmi was saying that halwa is made in in our homes on special occasions so it's a craving to have a halwa if there is a special occasion on a particular day so these are habits now habits means that they may not be normal it's like somebody smoking or somebody having alcohol every day so first and the foremost thing is that we need to acknowledge that these are not normal these are not normal because these are these are unhealthy habits and they have to be given a go by they they cannot be sustained because they are unhealthy so these cravings are related to past habits and they have to be gradually let go then second thing is that you need to be in a positive frame of mind so what i have realized is when you do something wrong when you do you eat something uh, wrong you don't want to tell it to somebody who is more health conscious so it whether it's your spouse or your brother or your niece or your uncle uh, you don't tell that i i did something wrong so i think it's very important that if you are doing well you share your success with others when because when you share it with others you are committed because if karishma shared her success today now she is committed that these 35 38 other members of this group are know that she has done well and should be even more careful next time when she that everybody is watching that how is she doing it so i think this is important frequent weighing as lakshmi said she doesn't want to weigh herself daily uh, i we also tell people that you should weigh yourself once a week but i think one should weigh especially on a day when you have not done well the previous day so if you have been to a party or you have binged somewhere come back and next day morning you stand on the scale and you see that you have gained 2 kg or you gained 1 kg and then you, as lakshmi said you plan your day because now you know where you have gone wrong and now you can plan your day or next week so that you you know what i have seen is the other way that when people are doing very well they on the next day morning they will weigh and they will say see i lost 1 kg but no hardly anybody tells their family that see i have gained 2 kg today so be open about your weight gain as you are open about your weight loss and then you are sort of committed because now everybody is watching that okay you have gained 2 kg are you are you being careful about it measuring exercise outcomes is important because uh, so all these uh, all these apps have help and it's very important to to understand how much you are exercising and learning to say no from being a, a, a yes person as uh, as said as was told earlier you must be a no person because that's the only way all of you which includes myself also have genes most of you have genes which are unfavorable gene as far as weight is concerned so we need to say no more frequently uh, when i was talking to karishma i think two days back she said she she does eat stoblaron sometimes and she has a small bite so probably she will talk about it when we will discuss have questions and then i think frequent follow ups and counseling sessions are equally important people try to run away from counseling sessions thinking that they are they, they are for a mental patients no counseling sessions is to help you the counseling sessions is what like what we are talking to each other now and frequent follow ups if you talk to your doctor more frequently probably you will be you will feel more answerable so i think all these things can help you control craving cravings is something that 
has to go away and they don't change on their own they they start right from the time when you when you board a flight or when you come out of flight or when you go to a grocery shop or when you sit on a laptop and uh, and are ordering from amazon avoid buying things which are which are wrong because when you buy them you stock them so you may buy them for your children you can buy chocolates at the airport for your children or your friends why why to do that i mean if you will do this you will realize there is hardly anything to buy in a in at the airport except maybe a bottle of good alcohol and maybe some dry fruits otherwise everything that is sold there is uh, increases your craving so i think buying things like chocolates sweets biscuits chips somebody asked me actually farooq asked me uh, yesterday what about cold cut salamis uh, sausages now all these have the 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 fats they are not made from lean meat they are made from the all the fats in the kind of uh, liver and kidneys which are all not used they are crushed and um, so i'm not saying that don't have them uh, you know if you love them you should have them but again uh, restrict that it's better to have fresh meat and a lean meat where fats are removed and then keep healthier alternatives handy like lakshmi said instead of sugar there is honey or you can use dates make a date syrup or use fruits instead of a dessert so if you don't have a, a desserts available at home and you you have a craving you maybe one date after dinner uh, three times a week is will not make any harm or, or or the other day you can have a bite of fruit so if you don't have you will you will probably replace it with somebody but if you have chocolates in your fridge loaded best kind of chalk best quality of chocolates you are bound bound to have and then your cheat day should not be a cheat day it should not be a cheat meal it should be a cheat bite and cheat bite should not be one more than once in a fortnight is my target but at the moment i am still on once a week so for people who are who have undergone surgery think of make making it once once a fortnight but a cheat bite one bite of chalk cake or one bite of chocolate uh, mr kiran shah was saying one bar of kit kat i don't agree with that but then he is he has his own way of living and he is leading a good life so friends what could be the tips and tricks most cravings pass off in 20 minutes and the cravings are really really miserable situation sometime i have cravings of eating uh, the favorite dessert like a ghevar or those kind of things which i am uh, brought up on eating so distract yourself if you have craving after dinner probably go out for a uh, walk or get busy in creating a powerpoint presentation if nothing is working call up your uncle or or your friend and uh, and start talking about things that you have been missing but distract yourself and believe me in 20 minutes time you won't even remember that you were craving for that favorite sweet then uh, adequate sleep uh, is very important so people who are not sleeping adequately have are known to have cravings because they want sugar rush so so that's very important that you you should sleep well at least 6 hours at night so that in morning you don't have cravings and if you are not sleeping that much or otherwise have your breakfast early don't don't avoid breakfast so that also helps in controlling cravings and i think a uh, um, a very important part of bariatric thing is a uh, is a body thing or your pillar of strength find somebody who is a who is a positive person who will say karishma uh, don't eat your tablerone uh, you have done very well we want you to be healthy for next 50 years uh, so find that person whenever you are feeling bad because you are not able to eat something that you wanted to eat give him or him or her a call and talk to that person frequently so that that person reinforces your your faith your confidence in yourself rather than the other way saying that come on nothing goes wrong have a have a portion of ice cream again nothing will go wrong you can burn it out 
uh, that uh, don't talk to that person again and again. He is a negative person for you. And then remain positive. You have not undergone surgery to have guilt every day. Uh, negativity breeds guilt because you 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 are negative. Then you eat something which is wrong, and then you feel guilty and you feel, why did I do it? And since I have done it once, let me have it once more today. And then I'm sure from tomorrow you will not do it. And then next day comes, and then you think. Uh, come on, one more day will not make a difference. That is how the old habits will come back. So I think habits do not change because you had surgery. We have only changed your stomach size. Many times I say we have not done your brain surgery. So you need to work on them. As Karishma nicely said that her uncle didn't believe that she will uh, be able to change her habits, but she showed the whole world that she has changed it. So I think it's very important that all of you, all of you need to work on it. And then you remember those days before surgery, when you will be going to gym for one hour, two hours, you will be starving, you will be doing intermittent fasting where you are starving for 16 hours. Now after surgery, we are telling you don't starve, eat every three hours. So what is so wrong? I mean, I agree that you need support and we are all there to support you. But these are these are these are some of the tips and tricks that can be used to to help you uh, control your weight. So I stop my screen share here.